Ajanian Quinn is the former West Coast editor of Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine and society editor of the Herald Examiner. Her cover stories are seen in Venice and Detour magazines. She is also a contributing editor to Angelus Magazine. For the next half hour, Joan will bring you inside news and views on society, art, film, and the exhilarating worlds of these multifaceted people. Here is Joan Quinn. Thank you. Thanks for watching, etc. Today our guest is Nancy Novograd, Editor-in-Chief of House and Garden Magazine. House and Garden is a Condé Nast publication and changed its name to HG recently. Nancy, tell us about that and tell us how long you've been editor. Well, I've been editor almost three years. It changed its name before I became editor-in-chief when Anna Winter took the magazine over. Uh, Anna, as you know, is now the editor of Vogue. But the idea was to give it a new identity, to modernize it and distinguish it from other magazines, and I think it's worked. Did you come out of a magazine background? Well, I actually, after college, I worked at the New Yorker magazine. Oh, you did? Yes, for five years, but in the fiction department, which is about as remote <laughs> as you can get from where I am now. But then I went into book publishing, and I was there for 10 years. I worked at Clarkson Potter, which is a division of Crown, which is now part of Random House, and which is owned by Cy New, uh, Newhouse, as are we all. Yes, so <laughs> back to the same boss again. So, um, <laughs> but I, I was the editor of a lot of different kinds of books, from biography and health books and child care books and some other interesting and serious books, but I, I guess what I distinguish myself doing there was editing these style books like high tech and French style oh. and American country and Pierre Deux French country, so that's why I was hired for... So but that was the natural transition, that was the transition then. transition. Tell us a little bit about your personal life. Are you married? I'm married uh, to a lawyer. I have been for oh, 14 and a half years, and I have two children, a boy who's 11 and a daughter who is 8. Do, they all, do you all live in New York? We live in New York, and we spend weekends in Connecticut. Well, we talk about so much going on in the 80s and excess, and decorating was in excess. Our whole lifestyle was different in the 80s. What did you see? What excesses in decorating took place? Well, lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, money was just about incinerated every time one, uh, in every element of the house. There's certainly one way uh, to see how much, to imagine uh, that a great deal of money was spent, or to realize that money was spent, was to look at the window treatments. The curtains were layered and draped and tasseled and trimmed to an extravagant extreme. And now, what do you think the trend will be now that we're in the 90s? Well, it, now, now the trend is much simpler. Uh, windows are dressed very simply. Uh, curtains are simply bits of fabric and uh, very pretty p uh, curtain poles, maybe, and a very good fabric and maybe a, quali a wonderful trim but it's much simpler. And in general, everything in the house is much simpler. Why do you think that happened? Well, in part, it is, as you say, a response to the excesses of the 1980s. In part, it's the economy. In part, it's a desire for just a simpler life, back to basics. And I think also it's that people are much more sophisticated about design and much more sophisticated in general. And the home is not being used so much as a kind of a statement of one's status and people, one's wealth. People are staying home more. People are staying home and they're back to basics and they want a, a, a home that is a place where they can be comfortable and they have a sense of reality. I know you live in the East and I know you come to the West Coast all the time. Can you see the difference in the two different styles of, oh, of living yes. or decorating? Sure. sure, there are lots of differences uh, there, and most of them come from the very real differences in lifestyle. 
In the West, it's a much more outdoor-oriented life. Houses are indoor-outdoor. There are doors that open out and patios that are included in the house and a great deal of emphasis on health and being outside and sun. And this does affect the decorating. It's always been simpler and more relaxed. Uh, what about color? The color is lighter for the most part and there have been more pastels and that comes from the light. The weather conditions are very different. And what about East Coast style? They well, always kind of look at us and say, oh, nothing's going on in the West Coast. Well, in fact, I think we're, we're all going to be changing now, but <laughs> East Coast style is much more formal, more, more decorative, more, uh, more composed, maybe. But I think the, we uh, the West Coast style is fanning out a bit now, and a lot of us will be adopting some of the elements of, of California style, maybe not knowing that it is that. But this new emphasis on comfort, on a little bit more interest in easy care, uh, a little bit more of a, well, a lighter palette. And I think these are all elements of, of design here that, that we're picking up elsewhere. You think East Coasters will go on and use those things that you talked yes, about? Yes, as I say, I'm not sure they'll credit California. I was, I was just going to say, do you think they'll say we got it from? No, probably not. I know, uh, talking about our laid back lifestyle in California, also we have uh, an abundance of celebrities and I know you cover a lot of celebrity yes. uh, houses or you yeah. publish a lot of celebrity homes. We have a role in today, if, we, if you watch the monitor, maybe you can talk over it and tell us um, they're not all film star celebrities, but they're celebrities in their own right. Yes. Maybe you can tell sure. us who you see on sure. the slides that we see on the screen. Oh, this is the bedroom uh, that Farrah Fawcett uh, shares with Ryan O'Neill. It's in her house in, in L.A. And it has a very uh, dramatic uh, but relaxed California style. Uh, the living room of the house has a hand-carved wall, a drawing of a nude by Farah, and a kind of a light scheme, and then a glamorous look. That grand piano, of course, helps. Did she draw the picture? Yes, or is yes, it of she. Her? <laughs> well, I don't know who is the model, but she did draw it. Oh, she, did. she was an art major in school mm -hmm. and uh, has a great deal of interest in art still. This is the garden, a wonderful uh, uh, place to sit, a bower covered with leaves and, and some big upholstered furniture in the same house. This is the weekend house of Susie Tompkins in the north. She's the head of a spree, of course, and she has a very modern uh, California style. She's a very serious woman interested in environmental issues with a great love of early modern furniture and, a, uh, and an aesthetic that I think is very interesting for our time. Great. Is her house very colorful because she seems to well, love color? Well, this is color. a weekend house, and no, it, it, her houses are not colorful. I'll show you if we continue bits of color here. This, this is her San Francisco apartment. Mm. Uh, she, here she has some wonderful early modern furniture. The, the lamp is by Serge Moule. The, house, the chairs are by Jean Prouvé. <laughs> And of course, that view of the bay is unbeatable. Is that really a view? Or is it that is a really a view. It's an amazing place. It's a penthouse. Ah, now you asked about color. color. Yes. The plates that Harlequin wear is from Buddy's in L.A. That's her kitchen, oh. and they're wonderful sunflowers and uh, and a clock that has a kind of neon rim, 1950s style. And, and that's pretty much all the color in her house. Do you find that um, you've uncovered any secrets at any of the shoots with, with certain celebrities? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I have one editor who uncovers secrets regularly, and I ask, <laughs> I'd say I don't want to hear them. Oh, but our editors, our editors don't snoop <laughs> for, for the most part, and I don't think. I, what happens, though, is occasionally we do 
walk into situations which are revealing. That's what I in would In the think. case of one movie star, we, we came in while an enormous fight was going on. Oh, you did? And, and we certainly did see a little bit of the movie star prerogative in, uh, in action, you know, a little bit. <laughs> How did that shoot Something. go? <laughs> well, it was difficult, and in fact, I, I had to in my very Eastern way, un, uneducated about the ways of modern day stars, I really had to control myself after the shoot because of something one of the, one of the subjects did, which I felt was unacceptable. unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd have something to tell us about that. But I can't. <laughs> um, let's talk about just redecorating for the normal person, not celebrities. If you wanted to freshen your home just a bit without going to too much uh, extent, what would you suggest? Well, you could change the color of your walls. You put it, could put in a new carpet. You could change your curtains. Or you could simply, uh, right now I think what is very much in, in style to make your house more modern, probably remove some things. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, then in, during the n 1980s, tables were laden with pictures yes. and objets, and yes. there were lots of stacks of books all around the house. And now I think we're, we're pulling back a bit from is there, that abundance. Is there a, pr a particular color? Uh, that would be well, I trendy think or? certainly the creams and beiges are very much of the moment. But we see lots of interesting use of pastels, even pink really? or green. You know, some wonderful unexpected colors, earth tones. Mixed mossy with the greens. pastels? No, no, no. I'm on to a different palette. And one thing that I, I've noticed a bit of recently, particularly in some more avant-garde places, is bright color. Do you think more on the red. West Coast? No, I'm talking about the East Coast, Are you? really. No. If, if you were furnishing a new apartment and you had very little money and you wanted to buy just the basics, what would you suggest? Well, just the basics, obviously, you need a sofa and some chairs. But I would, I would get a couple of really interesting pieces, antiques. Right now, there's a lot of latitude in decorating. For instance, you can, as I have done, bring a piece of garden furniture into the house. Mm. Uh, I, ha I found a wonderful wrought iron table base at an antique show. It was really not a very special piece. And I had a m new glass top made for it, and it sits beside one of my more formal looking sofas. I noticed a lot of metal work, metal beds. Metal work is great. And if you, d if you have a limited budget, you could buy something, a metal work table, and, and you could, if you wanted to update your house, you could buy a piece of metal work furniture and bring it in, or a wonderful mirror mm, yes. framed in metal. There are some great craftsmen oh. right now, or some, a piece of gilt wood mm -hmm. furniture. Would, I don't think you uh, go along with this theory of decorating your house all in one style, say English, French, No, I don't. No, at just all. from what you're saying. No, I, I think that that's um, old and tiresome. Though some of my editors would argue against that. I, our creative director loves a very modernist aesthetic, though, uh, and that doesn't allow for a lot of, of different kinds, so he's, he certainly has a broader view of, <laughs> of some houses. Than I, that. Know, I, I know you travel a lot, excuse me, but I want to make sure that we cover this because uh, many people who travel and spend a lot of time in hotels like to make the hotel room cozy. Do you like that? No. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear <laughs> no, that. No, I've never bothered doing a thing. <laughs> oh, that's great. I was with Donatella Versace yeah. one time, and they come here periodically. And she had gone out and bought sheets to cover all the furniture oh. and drape the, the sheets on the, on the windows. And it looked so beautiful, masses of flowers. But I kept thinking, she bought them here, which is different than pack, packing up and carrying all these yeah. things around with them. Well, I'm glad to hear I that. I think it would make me too depressed. I always <laughs> want to get back home to my family. <laughs> I keep, well, that's part of uh, pairing off, and uh, that would be part pairing off. 
Uh, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll have Norman Stewart, who's a food stylist, and he'll be joining us. Will you stay with? Great. Thank you. We'll be right back. We're back again with Nancy Novograd, Editor-in-Chief of HG, and joining us is Norman Stewart, who, with Kathleen Spiegelman, de designs our sets each week. But Norman has a different title. He's called a food stylist. Hello, Norman. Hi. <laughs> Tell us what a food stylist is. A uh, food stylist uh, designs food uh, to make it camera perfect, uh, to come up with a concept with art directors and with clients to sell a product, to make money, or to make it beautiful in certain magazines that I work with. How did you choose this career? I wanted a professional career that would take me from behind a stove. <laughs> I didn't want them to find me dead one morning behind a stove. Um, and I uh, wanted to make pretty pictures and art into food. Uh, you did cook then. You do cook. Oh, I cooked all over the world. Have you? Tell us how an editor or someone making a commercial would find a food stylist? They look through the uh, New York Black Book or the LA Workbook uh, at different shots of photographers. Um, or you would uh, go to, if you wanted something for film, you'd go through the LA 411 and look for food stylists. So if there is an underground kind of place to find a food stylist. Do yes. you know about that, Nancy? Well, I know we have our own network. We know a lot of food stylists, the photographers we work with know food stylists. But it's tough to find a good one. Does travel help your business? Uh, that I traveled? Yes. Oh, definitely, definitely. Because any country that I go to or have been to, um, or if I'm designing something, um, I will, uh, I'll be given a plate and I'll think, what can I do with this plate? And I feel as though I'm in a different country, uh, who it's for, and put a theme to it. How much do you have uh, as far as being able to create the, the mood of the photograph or the commercial? Uh, if, if it's an editorial shot, uh, I can have 50% uh, uh, generally, the f photographer will have the other 50% um, uh, uh, for an editorial magazine. They generally let us go. Do they? Mm -hmm. Nancy was talking earlier about the trends of the 90s and, and coming down to basics. Do you find that uh, in the way you're styling food or in the way people are staying at home and cooking for themselves? As far as styling food, um, food has more height now. On a plate. It has lots more height. When I'm styling for different restaurants, uh, for different magazines, um, I'll go into a restaurant and the chef will prepare the food and then uh, give me the plate of food and I'll totally recreate it and recreate the setting that it's amongst. Do you, do you actually do the cooking then again or you recook it? I'll recook it or I'll ask the chef to recook items for me or I'll cut items so that they're perfect uh, for the camera. Is it real food? Is it real food? Sometimes it is, but there's a store out um, uh, in uh, what we call the valley um, <laughs> <laughs> where they make plastic chickens. Uh, <laughs> in fact, um, uh, a, major sushi food. <laughs> a major silver store, um, I just finished a, a cookbook for the Bel Air Hotel, um, and uh, the silver store gave us masses and masses of silver. And I went in there over Christmas because uh, this project was about two months long, and they had um, a plastic turkey, uh, <laughs> a, a bowl of uh, peas and carrots in plastic, um, uh, plastic grapes. It was like really hilarious. And I said to um, Colleen, where did you find these? And uh, it was the same store. It's a very famous but, um, plastic, plastic food. But do you use that in food in your styling? No, the, uh, the camera's pretty precise now, um, uh, so you have to use real food. But we do have tricks. Do you? Do you have certain also uh, guidelines that you have to stay within? Uh, well, we Can have. You well, paint the turkey. Oh yes, you paint it. You <laughs> paint it like I'll take a I'll take a turkey. I'll I'll give it a facelift by uh, pulling its skin nice and tight. Um, I'll cook it for maybe 15 minutes in a hot oven, and then just the same as. Any lady paints her face. I'll take uh, food colorings uh, and uh, different colorings, and I'll get the right um, color. 
and I'll paint that bird, and it'll stay in front of a camera for about 12 hours. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell and us some move. of the other secrets that you have, like when you see an ice cream bar and, and somebody's chunked into oh, it. Oh, for like your major um, <laughs> ice cream bar companies, where you see an ice cream bar with a perfect bite out of it. Yes. Yeah, they have these um, brass uh, teeth, and you put the bar in and go, boom. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to go through maybe um, uh, 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 around 400 ice cream bars. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. And they oh. just go right in the trash. Oh. Um, and you find your perfect hero, what we call hero ice cream bar. And then you've got to make the stencil of the teeth marks. If that doesn't work, you need maybe another 400 ice cream bars to find more. <laughs> so. You have a few assistants that, uh, or if you like to do the job yourself, practicing on uh, not so good ones. Do you know, do, <laughs> once you get that, does the light melt it? Oh yes, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, ice cream is really hard mm -hmm. to do, but we also have um, fake ice cream. Oh, that's what I wondered. Um, fake ice cream uh, is made with um, sugar and fats. Um, I was once giving a, a cooking class and uh, I had about 18 students and we had a black and white plaid floor and I taught them how to make fake ice cream. <laughs> we filled the floor with different flavors of ice cream. There was chili pepper ice cream, oh. there was saffron <laughs> ice cream, nasturtium ice cream. Wow. The list was endless. <laughs> and they were like kids in a, uh, a toy shop. It was so much fun. <laughs> well, you talked about uh, we talked about people staying in, and you mentioned cookbooks. I bet cookbooks are much more popular now if people are staying in and, and yes. spending more time at home. Yes, they are. Would you like to see one? Yes. Sure. You've done several cookbooks, mm -hmm. I know. This is one. This is actually on cocktails, and it's called Blythe Spirits. There you go. Did you do the cover photo? Yeah, I did all of the styling in it. Uh, simple items such as this. Over there. Yeah. This is great. Shows up wonderful. Right. And it shows the chopsticks one. That's a beautiful cover. This has sold about 50,000 copies so far, and it's won several uh, awards as oh, um, Pacific Flavors. Pacific Excuse Flavors. Me. This is the first one I did. I spent a year on this working with Terry and Hugh. They're both married, men and wife, photographer, <laughs> and uh, um, food person. Oh, beautiful. This we suspended the plate over a swimming pool and then uh, uh, without trying to fall in uh, we made the plate. Look at the pool. <laughs> but Norman, how do you decide what you're going to put on what kind of plate? Um, well, we do like, um, let's see, here's a, here's a really fun plate. Um, it's by Swid Powell. It's called Atlantis. And this is the shot that I did for it. Oh, good. Let me see if I can help you. Uh -huh. So you ha did you have to do a salad? And um, you chose a plate, or did you have the plate and decide well, to do a salad? You know what we have here in my pocket, don't you? We what? have the silverware. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the silverware. <laughs> um, I was doing a shot for, with, uh, with this photographer, Brian Leertart, and um, we, I chose the props for a different shot. And then he said, I just love the silverware, um, which, by the way, is like $870 a setting. Yes, but let's tell what it really is. It's not your normal run-of-the-mill sterling. Uh, it is sterling, but it's not. It's made by a jeweler called Sue Dorman, uh, who's a friend of mine. These are art pieces, I uh. would say. Yeah. Actually, there's only two of those in existence. Is that, I would uh, say yeah, they in were, Malibu. Yes, I would say they were art pieces, limited edition. And we, um, we, we uh, had a, a rusted metal background, which is quite, pretty popular um, nowadays. Uh, then we ran into the alley and found some uh, rusted old paint cans. <laughs> I made up a vinaigrette with uh, herbs such as uh, lavender. Um, beautiful. He does just beautiful, beautiful And work. then put a, uh, a, a salad together, which is of avocado. And uh, I did the California Avocado Board's uh, National Lettuce. Show us this edition. one picture. The lady? I love the lettuce, the lady and the lettuce, because Ed Ruscha made a movie years ago, a homemade movie. And he made a salad in the bed. 
and <laughs> they climbed into bed with the lettuce. And here's a different version of this. This over here, Nora. Uh, oh, perfect. This is a lady Isn't in that um, great? in Radicchio. She had to let. <laughs> this was made for a magazine. Uh, uh, the the uh, the salad is uh, uh, yellow uh, peppers, bell peppers, carrot, and radicchio. So she had to lay there for two and a half hours oh. while I placed about $600 worth of ridiculous around her. <laughs> she was a really good sport, and we had a lot of fun doing it. She had no idea she was going to do that. Did she have any salad dressing mixed on top of her? No, she asked for no dressing. <laughs> Those were her salad <laughs> dishes. <laughs> Without dressing. You brought some other plates. What would you do on something like this one on top? Um, this one? Uh-huh. Hmm. I'd probably say, well, this is a, a you know, oh, it's a you know really that? fun that. sandwich. That's an, another Swid Pal design? Um, it's uh, it's uh, almost by Swid Pal. We're not quite sure if it's by Swid or by um, huh. another company, but um, it's actually by Italy. They're real close. Uh, but it's great for a salad. Well, uh, but my salads are a little uh, different. <laughs> Lots of nasturtiums. Uh, um, uh, lavender, uh, barrage, uh, salad burnet. Well, you know, in, in Los Angeles, we go to a lot of parties. We eat a lot of salads. And every week, I go out and cover some different kind of event and take my snapshots. And we try to close, et cetera, with snapshots or Joan Quinn's clicks. And tonight, today, the uh, party was at Wendy Stark's house. And it was Bob Colicello's book on Andy Warhol called Holy Terror. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for watching, etc. And Nancy Novograd, editor in chief of HG, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Joan. And Norman Stewart, keep doing our sets and keep mixing those salads. Very good, John. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Come back again, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>